what's happening. It's uh, been a good day. These uh these pre comments by David Nanyans uh, Nanya. Uh, did you guys watch the Lord of the Rings? We was kings. Um, so Shane hasn't seen it yet, and uh, I haven't seen it all. But my buddy from the East Coast shared with me um, a little Discord stream earlier today, and uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't wait to talk about that uh, on our review tomorrow. We are going to be re doing the actual review tomorrow during the day, um, and not today because it actually doesn't come out technically until this evening. So we couldn't do it if we wanted to. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, it was very frustrating to like need to see that show and know that there was a whole bunch of people around here who went to see Rings of Power at the movie theater and they just didn't need to be there. Yeah, I don't understand. You know I mean? We don't eat. We, we what do we live? We live like four hours away from each other and you have like three options to my 32 options. I, well, what's the deal? Right. Well, we live four hours away from each other, but it's only like 90 miles which should not be four hours. So <laughs> yeah. that's the weird thing about it. But yeah, there's like three theaters. They're all sold out. I could not go see it. So I was very frustrated. So I had to sit around and kind of listen to everybody else. But tonight at 6 p.m., we will get to see what everybody is saying is a pile of garbage. So it'll be interesting to run through that with you today. Oh, my gosh. Um, I, I will say this. I, I, saw, I saw one scene with the, the dwarven queen. <laughs> I don't forgot her name. Oh my oh, god. Oh, the dwarven queen, yes, is Oh my god, it's so rough. Uh it is rough. Um that is gonna be one of those shows. It's just we're gonna we're, we're gonna enjoy reviewing that show and not because we enjoy the show. I look, I'm not gonna speak for Shane, he hasn't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. And I haven't seen it at all. I've only seen scenes that were streaming on Discord and I purposely left because I didn't want to uh ruin it for myself. But I I believe that it is going to be such a a sea of salt um, that it's almost going to be fun. So that said, who do we That's got here? Point. We got Penny, David, Marshall, Stephen, Ernest. Hey man, I've seen you guys for a long time. Yeah, uh, Jeremy Snyder, welcome back, my friend. Uh, it looks like Kenny will be joining us in the in the members section, and we got Atheist for the Cause and Mexican Iron Man over in the members section. So listen, um, you guys, this is what we are talking about today. I know Shane already said it in his sort of his pre wind up, but in case you forgot, we are going to be talking about Lord of the Rings. Um, apparently, a lot of people are agreeing it's an epic catastrophe, which is. I don't know why I get so much joy out of this, but it's fantastic. I don't know either because it's it's breaking my heart. I know, but it's like I will get into it. House yeah. of the Dragon. Uh, there's already there's already a shakeup going on House of the Dragons, and we are we are really loving that show. And uh, bums me out to see a shakeup, but hopefully it's for the best. That's how you make a prequel. Rings of Power. Take note. Oh my God! And remember we didn't didn't we say like a couple months ago like these are coming out around the same time and they have the, the similar feel same genre like one's gonna beat the other and woof. Yeah, Warner Brothers uh, regretting is regretting releasing the Zack Snyder Justice League. I don't know if that's Warner Brothers proper or the old no. Warner Brothers. It's Warner Brothers insiders who work there. I see. Well. We're having a fun time. We'll talk that. about that one. Looks like uh, Ryan Johnson may be back, boys and girls. He might be back for to finish his Star Wars trilogy. No, to, to get a Star Wars. He's going to start one. He's going to start. Not just finish he's, one. He's gonna we're going to get three more movies. We're going to get three more Ryan Johnson movies. Yeehaw. Who, whose idea? Okay. We'll talk about no, it. I don't even want to talk about it. But Kathleen Kennedy, because it keeps mentioning, oh, I see Kathleen all the time. I can't wait. Oh, wow. yeah. Thanks, Kathleen. Also, uh, we're doing our She-Hulk review because uh, why not? Like, we're, we're both on the fence here. We don't know if we like it or dislike it. There's parts that are good and there's parts that are bad, and it's worth talking about. So we're going to do little mini reviews uh, on Thursdays. Nothing long, no hour long up and downs, no. just... Fun it little... will not be longer than the damn episode, right? Which is like fourteen and a half minutes, <laughs> right? Right, for real. 
Also, we got some insight on the Lower Deck Strange New Worlds crossover, and it's a doozy because I called it. I want to be clear. You did. I called it. You did call and it. And we're going to wait to talk about it, but I I called it like two weeks ago. I called it. Yes, you did. Um, And uh, Henry Cavill's, the whole, hit, you know, is, is Henry Cavill coming back as Superman? Is that happening? Well... It's looking more and more like it is, and I know every week we talk about this, but every week there's some new information that comes out, and until they officially announce this thing, every new <laughs> insider and every new rumor is going to require a little bit of discussion. But I like this one because this is somebody who did not want him to come back. Right, so, yeah. which, which feels even better. Right. And it looks like the end of 2023 is going to be a little classic Star Trek versus Star Wars movie battle. And <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, sh it should, except for both things are maybe not happening. I don't know. We're going to talk about that. Well, it's so the Star Trek four. If I doomed, doomed HUD just put in here that Star Trek four lost its director. So, <laughs> again. <laughs> Again. I, so we're gonna talk about that, yeah. but real quick. So they still Matt haven't Shanky signed they still haven't signed the actors yet, and the director they had signed they lost, and it right. comes out in 14 months, I think, right? Yeah, they're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how they possibly do that, man. Yeah, that's that's not good. <clears throat> All right. Um, one thing about uh House of Dragons, I know we're gonna talk about Oh, we're not reviewing House of Dragons, by the way, this week, guys. We're going to start doing... Oh, let's show that update real quick. So we're going to be doing... Because the way these shows are dropping, we don't want to do our our reviews a week late. So we're going to be doing uh, the Rings of Power review. You're getting more content. That's what that... This, this is what this means, by the way. Yes. We're going, to doing, we're going to be doing Rings of Power reviews on Fridays and then um, House of Dragon reviews on Mondays. So and those are going to be live streamed to the members. So when we do them, we're doing them live to members. Everybody else will get them after that at some point. Right. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to live stream to the members and then we're going to, um, we'll upload the actual edited clip, you know, later that day or something. So and we're going to come out with those quickly. So just, if you want to know right away, that's it. As quick as possible. Um, yeah. So today though, uh, we're going to talk about house of dragons, but we're, we're not going to review it. Although, can I say one thing that's been bothering me? I was promised an episode two time jump, and I have not gotten that yet. We're still episode three. And that I was not... my fault. That was my fault. But I got to tell you, I was hoping the whole time I'm watching episode two that they would not time jump yet. Like, I, I knew, I know it's going to happen, and it's going to happen soon. But I was hoping because I really needed them to flesh out what was happening in this early time frame. And I feel really good about the first two episodes. In fact, I feel... I just this is a damn good show, man. It's yeah, just it's really good. It's already so good. Forget what happens at the end of like if you're mad at Game of Thrones still, just forget about that. Just, yeah, that, just forget yeah, that. That, that don't matter. Show yeah, that that doesn't happen for uh, a couple hundred years. So who cares? It doesn't really impact what's happening here, frankly no. speaking. I thought it was actually pretty uh, pretty rad to borrow an old Ooh. term. Pretty nice. radical. That's in my wheelhouse, by the way. That's that she that the. Uh, whatever her name is, the main character showed up uh, to talk to Damien, Damon, Damon, whatever Damon, yeah. mm -hmm. on the dragon. It's like, what are you yeah, doing? Cousin? That was cool. What are you doing yeah. cousin? What's going on? Their, their interaction was almost respectful. Like they, like they clearly, uh, they, it feels like family arguing, you know? Yeah. Damon's got the hots for her. So that's, that's what's going on. Uh, so. so do I. So, Okay. <laughs> makes you can't say that. She's... Makes two of us, Damon. Makes yeah. two of us. All Not right, yet. man. You can say that when she's older. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. I like I like platinum blondes. Okay. What do you want? Okay. Got and it. And yeah. brunettes. And over black. the age of I like 18. all women in general. So <laughs> over the age of eighteen. Yes. Over the age of eighteen. Doesn't matter what color hair color you have, really, <laughs> to be honest. But it's a bonus, and we'll talk about this. It's a bonus if your your skin is green. So is green, yes, yes, yeah. I understand. That is definitely uh, my go-to. Okay, you guys ready, ready to jump into it? I'm just ready to do stuff here. Is there anything cool happening over here in the comment section? Let's check, let's man. See. Check. That's let's, your job. Let's see. There's here's something good. Yeah, here it is. 
Thank you, Marshall. Finally, Shane is here. I was getting tired of that Brian guy. Oh, oh wait. Hey, Brian. That was pretty cute. That's not what he said. That's exactly what he said. He's got little happy faces and a giggle here. I like Marshall. Marshall's. I don't Marshall's see any of that. I don't see any of that. I'm not talking about. Uh, Lat- Latino Slant was disappointed with the first two episodes shown in the theater. <laughs> okay. Add him to the other people. Uh, seriously, you both need to check out Ramstein when they play the LA Coliseum at the end of the month. It was an amazing spectacle. That sounds pretty cool. Thanks, Jeremy. What's Ramstein again? That's like a, a hard rock band, right? Got a rocket, man. Why am I forgetting Rams? I feel like I've heard it, but. By the way, did you guys see the DC fandom? What? What? I'm oh. actually okay with it, Marshall. I will stop. I'll it's stop. boring. Fandom is boring. No, it's yes, but we get new content, man. They need to make. A, they need to. They need to do like, like, like what Disney does with you know Star Star Trek Day is better. Oh, speaking of which, guys, you guys are mostly here every Thursday, but next Thursday, Brian and I are going to be streaming uh, Star Trek Day live. Yes, We're be commenting actively, showing you guys Star Trek Day, and. You're saying probably pretty bad things to people. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fun. Yeah. So we saw that the uh, Star Trek Day started streaming around this, a, a similar time as we were on the same day, and I'm like, you know what? We're just gonna go ahead. Let, let's just let's just do uh, Star Trek Day uh, live, and not exactly live. We're probably gonna be like an hour behind, which is fine. Oh. We'll be able to because I think they start an hour before us, so we'll be able to like. Uh, get all the top tier stuff and not have to deal with all the not the nonsense. Oh, so we're not going to sit through the garbage stuff. Yeah, no garbage. Oh, see, no. I was I thought we were like going to do it like live, and then we could cover our other stories when stuff was bored. No, oh. I mean that maybe we would have, we would have to start like three hours earlier than usual, which I don't want to. Oh, I'd rather, okay. I'd rather just cur- curate the stuff, you know. Okay, well, anyway, so come come check it out. We'll hit the good stuff. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, so good. So while I while I'm not happy that uh, fandom was canceled, uh, I do think that fandom is stupid. Yeah, let me explain. You have a hundred hours of content in a tight twenty four hour window. Okay, it's literally impossible to digest the entire event. It's not possible. It's not really good. It's not good stuff though. It's just it was kind of last year's was boring. Boring. I don't know. I, I like the the flash trailer. Listen, but... they got to get their house together. Warner Brothers needs to pull it together. They ain't got time to be messing around with Fandom. They got to pull it together, get their money straight, figure out what the heck they're doing. It's there's some there's some crazy stuff. There's like this the shift in the whole universe is happening right now with the with new people being in charge and shows being canceled and moved. It's it's probably a good time not to do it. Yeah, it's weird that that. That's weird, isn't it? Isn't it weird though that they cancel it like like a month before it's supposed to take place? I just don't know. Well, I mean, everything's happened recently. That everything with Zaslov's happened like like so recently. So it's yeah. just another thing. Like it would have been canceled a month and a half in advance before. You know what I mean? So sure. Yeah. All right. Well, they know. don't want Henry Cavill getting out to happen. Oh, 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 oh. I they gotta hide it. I so hope that's accurate, by the way. God. Marshall's right. It's mainly like pre-recorded content. By the way, Marshall, uh, <clears throat> I mean, we'll, we'll announce this later, but we're going to be uh, putting uh, DC content, um, exclusive DT content on an exclusive channel, and we'll talk about that at another time. I know you're a big DC guy like me. All right. <clears throat> Let's jump into Lord of the Rings. Rings of of power <laughs> lord of the rings yes you Hold shall up. not pass <laughs> the let, me, let, me, let me set this up properly oh i wasn't ready for that we are talking about lord of the rings rings of power and amazon's catastrophe of a prequel and i said that word wrong shane what's going on here bro you shall not pass judgment you shall not pass into uh, profitable territory. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, it probably will. I mean, regardless of what what we think, you know, the, the, the saddest part about, and I honestly, I haven't seen it yet. I've heard everybody else. And I'll say this is what has me convinced it's not going to be good after I watch it tonight. 
Um, we weren't able to get into the theaters because they were all booked up around here. But when Nerdrotic and the Washington Post agree on something in entertainment, right? Yeah, it's not going to be good. Yeah. Guys. When when Gary agrees with Washington Post, yeah. Oh no, they, that that's they like come to the same. Yeah, that that's a sign that that the first trumpet has blown. <laughs> well, it's interesting too because Jeff Bezos, uh, of course, owns the Washington Post, owns Amazon. And um, and the Washington Post just just, fla- you know, flagged it, just beat the crud out of it, you know, and it's like, all right, well, at least you got to give them credit for free speech and allowing <laughs> the tear it apart. But the reality is this is a global effort. And I think the reason why Amazon isn't worried about our uh, our hot takes over here or our dislike into the depth of it is they feel like they can probably just push through with a global audience and make all the money they want. Um, but we've got a little bit of a problem, Brian. Um, <laughs> well, we've got what, a problem. I'm sorry. I'm over here laughing because <laughs> Mr. Ticketrunk said, while they talk about rings of power, there should be circus music playing in the background. <laughs> and Mexican Iron Man said, Lord of the Diabetic Rings. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Entertainment Weekly did a little snip on it. And let's just real quick, I'm just going to read their little snip. And then this will tell you, Man, Entertainment Weekly is jacking you. This is just not good. It's so bad all the way around for these guys. Uh, it says here there there are, there are ways to do a prequel, and Lord of the Rings: The Rings of Power does them all wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> take six or seven things everyone remembers from the famous movie trilogy, adds a water tank, makes makes nobody fun, teases mysteries that aren't mysteries and sends the best character on a pointless detour. Uh, He's talking about Galadriel, uh, who's the main character, who spends the premiere telling people to worry about Sauron. In response, people tell her, don't worry about Sauron. (laughs) Uh, That's one hour down, seven to go this season. And, you know, this is the the feedback we've been getting a lot, is like, it's it's really gorgeous to look at. Like, we can't even say, it's like, really, they did a great job. It's beautiful, right? (laughs) But it's boring and slow yeah. and pointless. Our dress. Right? Is it sounds like a billion dollars yet? <laughs> I know. You're right. Sound like a billion dollars. So and here's the problem. Aren't they owned by Amazon? I don't I don't know if Amazon owns EW. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we can look it up. You're always asking these hot button questions. Does does these guys own it? Let's see. Does Amazon own? No, they own the Washington Post. No, I'm wrong. Sorry. Yes, they own the Washington Post. No, they don't own it. Okay. Um, but what's interesting here is to make a prequel, I have realized something now in order to make a good prequel, you need to use none of the characters that have already been used. Okay. I, this is the secret. I, I now realize this. There are two good prequels I can point to. Okay. Uh, Hold on. Am I, Discord Star Wars? I don't know. You can hear my discord. I can't hear your discord. Uh, I could. My bad. Go ahead. <laughs> Talk to your gamer friends later. Man, I love Mr. Tickle Trunk keeping it real. It's good I didn't. To see you again. I didn't even know it was open. I didn't hear anything. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. So, it's all good. I didn't hear it. Well, I'm not listening to the stream. So, <clears throat> so there there are two good two good prequels that I can really firmly stand behind right now. The first one is Star Wars uh, Rogue One. Uh, yeah. Fantastic prequel. Guess what? None of the original characters are really part of that movie until you get Darth Vader and and uh, Princess Leia at the very end. Right. Okay. So they're not there. So anything can happen to these characters that you know nothing about. Right. And so there's a sense of of fear and like concern and stress as you're watching it. Well, guess what? House of the Dragon for Game of Thrones. These are no characters that have come before. We don't know who's going to get killed in this one or what's going to happen unless you read the books, which I didn't for this one. So the problem with Lord of the Rings is when you put Galadriel as the main character of the prequel, we know what happens to her. There is no stress, concern, fear, or anything that's going to happen to her. She's going to be just fine. Right. And when you make a show like this and then you make the first episode as milk toast, 
as you make it as boring and bland and you're trying to like gently dip people into here. Instead, like House of the Dragon, you just throw people on fours and have at them and kill people and slice off heads and really get into the business and into the drama. You grab people's attention. Instead, yeah. you make Ring of Ring of Death or whatever we're watching here, Rings of Power. And, uh, and <laughs> or the Onion not. Rings. <laughs> onion rings of power perhaps i mean and then to top it all off i've, I've been hearing this whole cw comparison oh, for God. and i let me tell you something when you say cw in my presence i immediately think of angst dark teens struggling to survive in the world and i don't want to watch that i i've watched too much of that in my own house i do not want to watch any more young teen right. angst when it comes to lord of the rings which I, is i immediately think we are the Flash, Barry. We are the Flash. <laughs> I mean, that's the best the CW has to offer. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the best the CW has to yeah, offer. Yeah, that was like what their about, flagship what, show. <laughs> right. What about, like, the worst? I mean, Lord of the Rings, guys. Lord of the Rings is, is like, literally what indoctrinated me into fantasy and science fiction. Right. It's like the reason I love this genre initially. Like it brought me that there are other worlds than these, right? Right. Not to take away from Dark Tower Stephen King, but you know, and to just make something that is not wonderful and just the best it can possibly be is is, is sad. And so I'm not looking forward to watching uh, the episodes tonight because I already feel like it's going to be pointless. But we'll watch it and we'll review it and and all the good stuff. So yes, a sea of salt. Let sea of salt. Let your anger overcome you. <laughs> well, we'll tell the truth regardless. So if there is something good about it, we'll say that there's something good about it. And if there's something bad about it, yeah, we're going to jack it up. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I also don't really like the actress that plays Gadriel. I know everyone else does, but... I, I mean, every, I mean, do they like her? So the, the actress playing Gal uh, Gadriel... Uh, Gal Galadriel. Galadriel. <laughs> is uh, Morphid Clark. Yeah. And of course, we have seen her in what else? A bunch of she's people. A Ooh, she's a Swedish born actress. A bunch of people keep telling me how great she is. And I'm like, yeah, I don't get that. Well, here's her previous movies. St. Maud, Pride and Prejudice. All right, you lost me there. Yeah, you lost me. So you say me. Pride and Prejudice, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. The, the moment you say Pride and Prejudice, you lost me. I'm done. Like, you lost me. I'm, like, gone. Like, Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> what up? Well, babe, are we done watching this, babe? Hey, what? Over? Uh, yeah. What's that? Do, do, I, do, I, do we get naked now? Right? That's that's the deal, right? <laughs> I watch these movies and the we point. get naked? Right? <laughs> so, yeah. That's unwritten rule. The whole, unwritten rule. I've seen nothing that she's been in. And that's probably a sign that I'm I don't like the kind of work she does. But that doesn't mean that she's she can't be a great Galadriel. It's just everybody says she's not. So I tend to probably agree. We'll see what happens. What did yeah. you see? You saw her. What did you see? Um, I saw a lot of um uh she her emotion is so uh subdued, even when she's like uh you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of remember Dune with What's his yes. name? Timothy. Yes. Timothy Oliphant Shalom, on Quaalude. Shalom, 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 no. Whatever. Yeah, sorry. Charlemagne. I like Timothy Oliphant. Timothy Charlemagne on Quaaludes. Um, has, oh, okay. has, has the same. Like it's not as bad as, as Quaalude Charlemagne, but it's on that same vibe where it's like, I feel mm -hmm. like you should be showing more enthusiasm or emotion mm -hmm. here. Why is everything mm -hmm. so subdued? I don't get it. And that seems to be like the new way a lot of <clears throat> these movies are being made where they where they get these like young actors and actresses who have so little actual uh presence, personality. I see. Okay. And they just they're so, just really they're really good at posing, you know? Is this their serious? Is this like the seriousness of them? Like how they act serious? Is that what you're saying? Because to me, that's like what the CW is. Like this is the whole Feel you get when you watch the CW, it's like teenagers doing this, uh, right? I didn't find my coffee this morning. I can't yeah. believe I gotta go to school. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. School. 
Is that kind of what we're dealing with here? Is that what, uh, what you saw? Why does everyone look so high in these shows? Or tired. Or, or... tired. Like, is yeah. everyone just, like, blazed out of their mind? I don't get it, dude. <laughs> Well, they did legalize marijuana in a lot of states. So a lot of these, a lot of these shows are like just so. There's no enthusiasm. Everything's everything's like I don't want to say dry, but more like dripping boring. You know, like I I can't tell you. It's very hard to vocalize this problem, but Charlemagne really sums it up for me. Watch Dune and watch Charlemagne. Now, when you watch Dune. Ignore all the beautiful sets and scenery and cinematic glory because, damn, that movie is shot well. It looks gorgeous. Multiple screenshots can be made into giant canvas posters to put it in your house. 100%. Do you think it could be because Focus of... on Charlemagne just being like, hey. Like, I don't get it, dude. It's just so... It does. It gives me... It does nothing for me but bother me. And Maybe it's going to get older. I'm getting older and I'm like, oh, God, damn teenagers. Well, could it be also that sometimes a project can just be too big? So maybe they're so focused on the visuals when they're writing the script, they're not, like, worried about making the characters drive the story. Maybe they're more worried about the visuals driving the story instead of the characters. And so the, the, the director or the showrunner or the people doing it just kind of get sidetracked and sidetracked and they don't really understand. I mean, it's, it's just not that hard to read a script, to put something down and go, damn, that's good. Yeah, that felt good. That felt right. You know, that's going to be intense on the screen. That's going to be awesome. Right. It's, like, it's not that hard to get there. And for some reason, we get this milk toast, this dudded out acting and all these, I mean, go back to wheel of time and some of these other shows. And it's like, when you're making it, don't you see how boring it is? Yeah. It's so, it, you know, I like this. Marshall said insufferable. That's, that's the right word. Yeah. That's a good word actually. Yeah. You know what? It, it starts with me. It's like, um, what's that? What's that? Uh, that chick's name? Zandia Zendaya. Damn it. Zendaya. Mm -hmm. Zendaya. Okay. She's one of those people. I'm sure she's a nice person. I don't know her. I don't care. But she looks like this. And her, all of her responses are It's either, true. Even in Spider-Man. They're Same either thing. sarcastic and witty, or I'm slow and I'm tired and I'm, I just popped a Xanax. And you're like, and even in Spider-Man. And the only reason Spider-Man does well, why? Because that's not how Tom, uh, Tom, Tom Holland, Holland is not that way. He's not that way. He's acting like he's actually acting. He has a right. character, enthusiasm, personality. He's acting against this, this chick who's like, huh, oh, Peter, you're so funny. Like, oh, my God, it's like the worst. Without Tom Holland oh, yeah, yeah. in that movie, those movies would have been so hard to get through. Imagine if it was Charlemagne and Zendia instead. T Timothy Chalamet, yeah. Whatever his name is. Charlemagne was a, was, a, was a guy who was in stories care. a really long time ago. I don't care what his name is. I guess I have to remember. It's Chalamet. Name. It's Timothy right. Chalamet. Timothy Xanax. That's what I'm going to start calling him. Timothy Xanax. <laughs> I can't pronounce his last name. Timothy Xanax <laughs> and, Z and Zandia just blazed out of their mind, like just swinging through the city. Like, oh, man. <laughs> like, yeah, well, it's true. Marshall says that she does get better in No Way Home. She does get better. But you know, it's kind of obvious, you know, Zendaya was found on YouTube, surprisingly enough. Uh, and she wasn't a trained actress, so maybe she's still learning to get there. But boy, does she got CW in those early, early things. She's got CW written all over. I would argue she has the current way of acting for the for these people. Like, she's got a down pat. She's 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 killing it. But it's not good acting. So good. if it is, whatever she's doing is bad. Yeah, it's bad. Doesn't work. Yeah. Far out, dude. I just uh, so, I just watched an interview with uh, that guy from um, Half Baked, D Brewer Brewer Tim. I forgot his last name. Jim Brewer. Jim mm -hmm. Brewer. And I was like blown away to know to find out that he is not a pothead. I always thought he was just a pothead. He's not. Oh no, he's just yeah, he's weird. He's a he's, weirdo. He's just an actor. <laughs> he's he's sort like of. he's a comedian. He's yeah. like you guys are gonna <laughs> like this, but I've never smoked weed. Not once. <laughs> I'm like, really? He's a strange dude for sure. <laughs> so we've got uh, so we've got nine more. Well, actually, eight more. So after it comes out tonight, there's two episodes coming out tonight on for the for the Ring of Rings of Power. Um, and then we're going to have. Uh, wow, yeah, this is. 
So it's going to be coming out every Thursday evening, apparently, right? Right. Okay, so every Thursday evening, we're going to be reviewing it on Fridays. So stay tuned. Even if it's bad, guys, we're going to keep going. Yeah. We're going to just drag this thing out. If they're going to force us to to, to watch something <laughs> terrible, we're going to do it. It's give it its justice. Comes out uh, and, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. So let's go. It's gonna yeah, be fun. That's, that's really a good point. You know, we'll see what happens. All right. Well, that's enough of that until uh, a few hours from now. I'm assuming. Yes. Um, let's talk about house. Wait. <clears throat> Let me see. Wait, real quick. Before, real quick. Marshall said right. she did star on Disney Channel, Zendaya. So, yes, you're right. And I can't remember what it was. Was it like uh, Bunked or something like that or one of those shows? My kids watch it, but <laughs> she was boring in that one, too. Yeah, she's such a boring <clears throat> person. I don't know what to tell you, man. Um. Yeah, it's so weird. And like the style of acting is praised and like applauded by so many reviewers. Like, oh, Zendaya is so great. Timothy's <laughs> Annex is so great. And I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, there was an there was a, a reviewer, I will not say his name, for it may summon the gods of YouTube, but you've seen him. He's on YouTube. Um, he is friends, you know, he's much bigger than we are. But he was like, he said, without Zandia, I don't think that movie would have worked. Referring to one of the Spider-Man movies. And what? I almost broke my keyboard, dude. <laughs> Dumb. She, Anybody Tom, could have played her. Tom Holland needed her, mm -hmm. uh, needed a, an actress of her caliber to, to play off of. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's lame. How, That's are, so how are you an accredited, well-known, respected reviewer of anything? Somebody got paid. That's all it is. <laughs> That's the... <laughs> A lot of the comments were like, "Oh, okay, so this is the this is final proof that you're a shill." Okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right, ready? Of course. We are talking about House of the Dragon, or Game of Dragons, or the House of Thrones, or whatever House you want to call it. But the shakeup is in. Co-showrunner Miguel, I'm going to murder this last name. Ready? Co-showrunner <laughs> Miguel. Sip knock neck. Um, I'm not even gonna try. I'm gonna leave this to you, Shane. Okay, you explain I, what's happening right now. I, I think it's sapo it, it, it looks like Sapochnik, but it, it's, I think it's Sapok Sapochnik. Sorry, um, sorry, Miguel. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, Miguel. Well, yeah. So if you guys aren't watching um, House of the Dragon, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. you. Need to be watching House of the Dragon. It's the best thing on television right now, by far. Uh, I can't think. I'm trying. Let me think of something else on television. Wait, She Hulk. Rings of Power. Yeah, House of Dragon is the best thing on television right now. And uh, it's a fantastic show. Two episodes in, and I'm completely, like, hooked. I yeah. was so mad at the end of Game of Thrones. I'm like, this is terrible. They ended horribly. And I and we walked into this show thinking, oh, God, I don't want to watch this because I'm still mad. And guess what? I ain't mad no more. You know what made me the most mad about the end of Game of Thrones? What? Not being able to see what was happening. Mm. all those big giant battle scenes and all that. And it was so dark. True. I had yeah, my was... TV's brightness turned all the way up to like 100. And it was like you're six inches from it with one eye doing this. It was to, like, intentionally it. dark. It was like, are you trying to save money? Did you spend a billion dollars the yeah. last five seasons? And then the, the, the last three episodes you want to save money? Like what's, what are you doing? Yeah, that's that's part of the problem. Not um, to mention the cripple ends up being the king. What's that about? Jeez. Yeah, there's there's lots of bad about it. But if you're if you're watching House of the Dragon and and what's wonderful about House of the Dragon and and what every prequel should do is just don't have any of the same characters in it. And and you're and you have there's there's risk and there's you know there's things that can happen to those characters that you're actually worried about them. And I'm already smitten i'm already all the characters i love every single one of them i'm worried about some of them some of them i know are doing some nasty dirty things yeah, you know nasty uh, little boy you we get a nice little twist at the end of number two we get the dragons i was scared okay look the dragons made me nervous in episode two i'm like oh dang we about to see dragons taking people out right and then uh Next and then episode. another dragon shows up and you're like what right so and the, the dragons felt good and real like yeah the, 
graphics were good and they felt like they were part of the whole story. It's anyways, this isn't a, you should go watch house of the dragon, but you should go watch house of the dragon. So it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good TV, but, Rock oh, solid. but there's no runner left. So, yeah. Oh, so well, there's well, a showrunner. They have two. It's so weird though. Like you're doing so good. What's, what's going on? Why, why? You uh, doing... Well, he didn't want to be there in the first place. So let's be fair. Uh, he was tired of Game of Thrones. So he was a part, he was, he was, uh, uh, he'd been doing Game of Thrones for a long time. And, um, and it's actually a pretty funny story. I, I think he didn't ever want to do Game of Thrones again. And I think he came back to House of the Dragon partially because his wife, and he just felt like he had to for some reason. Mm. So uh, when this came out, they've been working on House of the Dragon for three years. And I think he's just burnt out on it. And it's, and it's really sad because, it is so good. If I think he's going to regret this because right. when this show goes for several more seasons and it's just like the best show on television or one of the best shows streaming, you know, he's going to be like, Oh, I'm not a part of that. You know, you know, yeah, I helped set it up and I helped get it there, but I'm, I'm not a part of that anymore. And it's just a real shame. And they can do this for like three seasons, right? Before they have to worry about hitting a, Dude, they can go for for they can go for a hundred years. Oh yeah, so they can go for a while. They can go for a long time if they really wanted to. They can take this, then they can go to the next one. They can go. They can walk it all the way up until the Game of Thrones time frame, which is a hundred, yeah. hundred and twenty years. Or yeah, whatever. so they can literally go like five or six seasons, seven years. Yeah. So uh, here's what. Good. Yeah. So here's here's what they had to say about it. So. Um, yeah, let me just get into this. Taylor, it's been a pleasure and an honor to be back at HBO, immersing myself in the world of the Targaryens. Uh, I look forward to working closely. Oh, no, sorry. This is Taylor. This is So what happened was is he left, uh, Sapochnik left, and uh, Alan Taylor, who's a Game of Thrones veteran, will join the, se- uh, join the team for season two. Yeah. Um, so, Sapochnik's so uh, statement's one paragraph above that. Was that above that? Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, working with uh, is this him? Yeah. yeah, working with the Thrones universe for the past few years has been an honor and a privilege, especially spending the last two with the amazing cast and crew of House of Dragons. Uh, Sapochnik said in a statement, "I'm so proud of what we have accomplished with season one, and overjoyed by the enthusiastic reaction of our viewers. It was incredibly tough to decide to move on, but I know that is the right choice for me personally and professionally." As I do so, though, I am deeply comforted to know that Alan will be joining the show. He's someone I've known and respected for a long time, and I believe his, uh, this precious series could not be in safer hands. Um, so he says, I'm glad to remain a part of the House of Dragons family, which is interesting, but yeah. he's not going to be going on to do it. Uh, Sapochnik, he got his career as a storyboard artist in Train Spotting, great movie. Uh, and he directed the 2010 film Repo Men. Uh, he also directed episodes of Fox's Fringe and House. But it was Thrones that this guy's career went stratos- uh, went into the stratosphere um, after he did a couple of the episodes Hard Home, Battle of the Bastards, and The Winds of Winter. Um, after he did Thrones, he directed Tom Hanks' sci-fi movie Finch, was released to Apple TV+. Plus. Which I have yet to see that. Damn, man. <clears throat> Uh, well, Apple TV and me, we we don't yeah. like we live in two different worlds, and I can't join its right. world. So no, you can't join the Apple world. You are not right. Chosen. I can't even can't even be there. Uh, there's okay. So this is the interesting part here. Uh, Sapochnik eventually. Okay, so before he did House of uh, House of Dragons, he went through a lot of vacillating. He says uh, the other showrunner Ryan and he had a long-standing relationship, and they worked really well together, and they liked each other. Um, and when they got deeper in the discussion, he realized he had to either shit or get off the pot. Those are his words. So he eventually decided to sign on while he was attending a Game of Thrones experience concert in Los Angeles with writer and fellow Thrones veteran Brian Cogman. There were 17,000 people going crazy for the show, and I didn't realize how passionate people still were about it. So Poshnik says, my wife turned to me and said, we're effing idiots. How are we not? How are we not doing this? <laughs> so I think he was like, I'm not doing this. I don't want to do this. I don't have nothing to do with Game of Thrones anymore. I'm ready to move on to something else. And then they went to the 17,000 people going crazy event. 
And his wife looked at him and said, what's wrong with you? you and as men typically do when their wives say, what's wrong with you? They go, okay, I'll do it. But, you know, now that he's like, okay, it's successful. I can leave. You know, get that money. Yeah. So he's out of here, man. That's it. It's cool. That's cool. All right. That's the story. So it's not a big deal. Uh, it's not like, you know. I mean, it know, could be. If stupid, he was the guy. I mean, if he was the guy yeah. that made it good, you're right. If it's good because of his work, and I'm not saying that's the case, but let's say it starts to go downhill in season two, because season one's a done deal, right? He's already been written. It's already been done. Right. But if season two comes out and it like kind of stinks a little bit, it could be that this gentleman was the reason why we were doing so well. Yeah. What if, uh, what if he's like the Kevin Feige of uh, Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones. Yeah. Kevin could Feige be. two years ago, not now. Right. Yeah. Today's Kevin Feige. Like, <clears throat> come on. You got to <laughs> talk. So what's going know. on with you, Kevin? What's going on with you, Kevin? You might knock it off. All right, listen, guys, uh, if you're not a subscriber and you're watching this now or later, please hit that subscribe button on the way to the comment section to tell Shane he's crazy. Yeah, because we're going to be talking a lot more House of Dragons, uh, <laughs> Ring of Rings of Power, all this great Lord Ring, uh, Onion Rings of Power. All onion right. Rings of Power. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, what's coming up next? Ooh, we get to talk about the Zack Snyder justice. Get ready. Mm -hmm. The, the Snyder, the Snyder bros are going to, are going to attack us. Here we go. Oh, no, no, no. They're not going to. No, not at all. I'm on their side of anything. Archmage Frey, if anyone wants to hire me to show run something, I will work cheap. I like that. You're hired, buddy. <laughs> I don't I care what it's. I didn't hear what you said. Because Archmage Frey says if anyone wants to hire him to show run something, he's down. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Let's rock and roll. We are talking about Zack Snyder's Justice League and apparently Warner Brothers regrets releasing the four-hour masterpiece <laughs> that is the Zack Snyder Justice League. And I, just just you know, I went and revisited that because I, I got like the, the 4K uh, version. Mm -hmm. My God, man. My, my God, that movie is incredible. Um, there's parts that I don't like. I don't like every time Wonder Woman shows up, it's like, oh, it's like some kind of like singing chorus that bothers me. Uh, <clears throat> but overall, it's an amazing film. I don't like that. It, just, just to be clear. I don't like the hyper Wonder Woman soundtrack that bothered mm. me. And I do. I still think Ezra Miller runs like a spaz, dude. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? It's like, oh, you don't like the way he runs? <laughs> They said like he 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 used it. He based it on ice skating. I'm not sure why. It's like weird. why do you say I'm going to be the fastest runner on the planet? Oh, let's base it on ice skating. Like why do you think that happens? Yeah, if I was the director, I would have been like, hey, hey, Ezra, just <laughs> just just run, just run like a normal person. <laughs> stop, stop, stop ice skating. Stop being weird. Um, well, that would be hard to do. Apparently, all right, he's, he's, yeah, he's hyper weird. Yeah, but right. aside from those things, it's a, it's amazing, and every character is great. It's great story, great all around, just fantastic. When Superman shows up at the end with with Steppenwolf, and it's like boink, and it just sort of like does nothing. Right. Oh yeah. man, I got my Superman fix, man. It was beautiful. So I love the movie, and I don't care. If Warner Brother insiders or legacy people over there regrets releasing Zack Snyder, because let me tell you something, you uh, legacy insiders, you are the reason David Zaslav is going on this almost murderous warpath. Your decisions, your poor decisions over the last four years, is what's led us to this point. So you regret releasing Snack Snyder Justice League? To me, that means you actually did the right thing. Well, and here's what's weird about it, Brian. It's like, so the report is, the Variety, it was a new report by Variety. It suggests, like you said, Studio Insiders still regret releasing Zack Snyder's Justice League on HBO Max. And it says, as related in the report, the lament over the director's cut of Justice League doesn't have anything to do with the quality of the film, or the rumored $70 million it took to complete. Instead, the studio is said to be dismayed that it failed to satisfy Snyder's online fans. 
So what they're saying is, uh, we did this because we wanted them to shut up and go away. And so they didn't. And so what's up, man? That's why we did it. Because we didn't do it because we wanted to do it. It was good. We did it because we wanted you to shut up and go away. Do you not That's know how here. fan fandom works? Yeah. When they like something, guys, they yeah. want more of it. Yeah. Not less. You yeah, don't you go, hey, thanks. Thank you. We'll go away now. Okay. No, no, no. You go, give me more. Stop harassing everybody about Zack Snyder's <laughs> Justice League. We're good now, right? No, yeah. yeah. He made a good product. People want more of it. Now, look, I'm going to say what I've said before. Um, you can continue the Snyderverse without Zack Snyder. You don't need the director. If he wants to come back, fine, whatever. I understand that he's like a controversial figure at that studio. You can continue what he started because what, what the Snyder fans really love, and there is a group of them they are like, I, oh, I watch everything Zack Snyder. I will die for that man. And you're right. And there's That's the other, not- there's the other group like us. We're like, Hey, look, we just, we just really like that version of Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman. Yes. And we like, we, we like the story he was telling. And can yeah, we continue we're not that? Zack Snyder's army. Yeah. We don't care. Like I, I do enjoy Zack Snyder movies, but I don't Spoiler. care if he does any more DC stuff. I just want you to continue what you started with Man of Steel, which is one of the greatest Superman comic book movies of all time. And then it continued with our introduction to the other characters. And and I'm ignoring the brief stint where your where Zack Snyder's entire idea was thrown on its head and they tried to replicate Marvel, Marvel and cram four, five hours of content into an hour and 20 minutes. I'm going to ignore that part of it. Right. Yeah, and, that's a good point. You know, I think anyone that sees this with a reasonable a reasonable uh, outlook can see that there's a there's, there's a hit here. Like these characters and the actors that are playing them are great. There, they, there is such a massive um, range of talent and ideas and things you can do with this universe. And I believe that Zaslav and company, the new Warner Discovery, WMD, <laughs> <laughs> I believe that WND sees what I'm seeing and go, hey, look, this, this is one of our biggest, you know, money makers that we're not utilizing properly. Which is why on their big like call they separated DC from the rest of the of the business. They're like they they this is DC Studios now. Like they are yeah. trying to do what Disney was able to do with Marvel, but with DC characters. I think they see exactly what we what we see. Now there's obviously more that goes into it, like a how much Henry Cavill wants, because apparently they offered him like an insane amount of money and he was like, Double that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is like right. ludicrous. Right. But it's and there. It's so weird. It's there, so of course, yeah. we're, of course. So I, 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 one more thing. I am annoying that people keep lumping all fans of Justice of Zack Snyder's universe in with all the real nutty, like Zack Snyder army. It's not the same thing. Right. They're not the same. You are generalizing someone's like of a film universe to not nutty people. Well, there's only two camps anybody can be put in these days. Right. That's it. I mean, there's only two. Right. So you're either in one or the other. There's, you know, yeah. We we experience this all the time. Yeah. But this right or left, here. Bat, well, Batgirl or Batman, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it, lots of things. But this report gets weirder because Rolling Stone last month laid out Warner Brothers' internal belief that Snyder directly mobilized the release the Snyder Cut movement against the studio. Hmm. Warner, Warner Brothers also believes that 13%, I don't know where they come up with the number, but 13%, 13% of Snyder's followers were bots. I don't know how you would know that, but okay. The story even contended that the studio believes that Snyder and, and Cyborg actor Ray Fisher worked in conjunction to make Warner Brothers look bad. Like, like Ray Fisher's whole thing was intentionally done by with him and Snyder to just make the studio look bad. So what they said okay. in that Rolling Stone article is they said that Ray Fisher held his criticism of the director and the people that he, that he, that he attacked, mm-hmm. not attacked, but like accuse, he held that information until a very precise moment so that Zack Snyder's uh, bot army would be the most effective. 
Yeah, no, he saved it until he was safe. Like, like until he was safe enough to be able to put the information out. Because let me tell you what, if you cross Joss Whedon in the middle of doing something with Joss Whedon, you're going to die. Yeah. So, a, you know, you got to wait. Guys, this is not like, uh, this is not something that's new. Like Joss Whedon has been a, a D bag on set since Buffy the Vampire Day one. Slayer. Since he was cleaning scripts for other people, he would complain about other right. people's scripts and, and them changing stuff he fixed. Yeah, you so he's he was, crazy. You think he was canceled? Uh, you know, randomly? No, it's it's been no. years of abuse. This guy has been <laughs> has, has been an abusive, manipulative douchebag. And listen, it's coming from someone. He's made some of my favorite things: Buffy yeah. the Vampire Slayer, Love Angel, Firefly. Um, even like the cabin in the woods, like, there's a, a lot of great things Joss Whedon has been a part of that doesn't, that doesn't excuse him for being an absolute a-hole. So this right. guy, the reason he's an a-hole specifically is, is because he wants everything that happens in a movie or a TV show to be done exactly the way he wants it to be done. So it's not, it's not like, I mean, he, on Buffy, he did some really dumb things because he was young and the power was going to his head. But when he started doing movies, he wanted every line to be exactly the way he wrote it. Right. He wanted every action to be exactly the way he wanted it to be because he wanted his vision. And he truly believed this because he would do other people's movies and he'd get his stuff axed out or he'd get like canned or they wouldn't do what he wanted to do. He'd be like, oh, well, it's not my movie, I guess. But the moment it became his movie, he's like, it's my movie now. And so that's why, you know, the stuff that happened with Ray Fisher was like, hey, man, I'm sorry you don't like it. Do it anyways. You know, because that's kind of what was done to him. Right. You know, and then you look yeah. at Ray Fisher, though, as Cyborg in the Snyder Cut, where he was able to actually bring character to the character. And it's phenomenal. Cyborg yeah, Josh is amazing. was wrong. I yeah. mean, he was wrong. He, Josh he was did wrong. justly wrong. Yeah. You know, you, know, you, 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 you got to have a guy yeah. in charge. But but art, is, especially art on this level, is about collaboration to a degree. Right. And he now, now in fairness to Josh, he'd already done avengers which was successful and so you know there's no reason to think he can't come in here the difference was is that joss i mean you guys all know the story joss was doing picking up snyder's work because snyder's daughter killed herself right or died can't remember which one it was but killed herself and so and then joss had to come in and like mess with his stuff joss is not good at other people's stuff so justice league had it been a joss whedon production from the beginning might have been good you know but we'll might. never know yeah, might have. Um, yeah, might have. Mm. Mi it might have been good, but for all the people saying that Ray Fisher held the information, yeah, I can see how the timing works. What works that way? It works, you know, uh, in the Snyder movement's benefit for sure. But you can also see how it's maybe he waited until he was paid, he was out of the door, and he didn't have to worry about anything anymore. Right. Yeah. And we we won't, we're not going to know what his true intentions were. Uh, and to, to go back to the bot statement real quick, first off, 13% is actually not much higher than the predicted 7% of all social media being bots, right? Number one. Oh, sure, yeah. So if you do go, oh, 13% of us, first off, I think that they're, I think that they're exaggerating. Um, let's say it was 10%. Let's say that a bunch of Snyder fans went and bought bots to help move the, the needle. That is okay. totally possible. Blaming Snyder specifically for going out and purchasing his own bots is ridiculous. I know. I know. That's stupid. And you got to take that entire article with a giant grain of salt because it was basically written by the old guard that were trying to keep their jobs after Zaslov came in with a murderous glint in his eye and said, <laughs> what you've been doing lately. <laughs> I hate those bosses. In that same article, they talk about like Hamada's plans and, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So here's the deal that Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone should be ashamed of themselves because maybe they wrote a hard hitting piece, but it was pretty much commissioned by the legacy uh, sh uh, showrunners for DC at Warner Brothers, and half. Well, I think it makes them look bad, huh? I think it makes Warner Brothers look bad. Well, I mean, to admit internally that you believe these things, that, that should have never come. Well, out. see, and, and that and that that's that's the statement. Though, it's like, there, remember, there is an old Warner Brothers and a new Warner Brothers, right? And, and considering 
80% of the old Warner Brothers no longer works there, it's very hard in this transitionary period to separate the two right now and know which Warner Brothers is talking. Because this, this is Warner Brothers during the transition when they're all being fired. <laughs> so I don't even know which one's which. All I know is this. If, if 50% of Snyder's online uh, movement was bots, fine, whatever. We got the Snyder cut and it was glorious. But and it fact, was wonderful. Yeah. Fact of the matter is, you uh, th- these people minimizing the amount of fans that this overall universe has is it's in my opinion, it is a failing effort. You're never going to get your jobs back. Your your ideas are never going to be back. You can be pissed off that you're that your horrible Batgirl, horrible whatever. Didn't get released, and this idea got canned, and all these ridiculously bad ideas that were just costing millions and millions and millions of dollars, and not making a penny, were axed. I'm sorry that you let, that you let you lost your projects. Bottom line is though, you were paid, and maybe you don't have that project anymore, but you were paid, and now you're on. Move on with your life, and stop trying to go after the what's left of this universe that a lot of people still love. In my opinion. Amen. No, I agree. We all do. Keep the characters, keep the actors, keep it going. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Okay, mm. moving on. Oh, you know, this is the topic, bro. We get to talk about Ryan Johnson. Okay. What? Oh. <laughs> Ready? Let me let me set this up. Ryan Johnson is back. <clears throat> Ryan Johnson is coming back to make not one. Not two, three no. new Star Wars films. No, He's, no. Ryan Johnson is getting his Star Wars trilogy. Yes, the director of The Last Jedi. One of the worst movies, one of the worst science fiction movies in known in current history. He is coming back. Or at least he wants to. To do a Star Wars trilogy. <laughs> like, what does it say? I'm sorry. It's so insane how unaware or or non not self-aware this person is that he thinks people want to see a continuation of the movie that tanked the multi-billion dollar franchise. It's not his fault. It can- it's not his fault. <laughs> it's not his fault. It's Kathleen's fault. She, she's. It's her fault. You know, we we did a whole. St- I can tell you guys, we did a great video. Yeah, that no one saw. Got to see. <laughs> did a great video about this. Nobody got to see. Ryan Johnson <laughs> is a victim. Ryan Johnson's a victim. He's a victim, bro. I feel like you're victim blaming right now because I feel like the victim. It, well, no, he is a victim. And I'll tell you why. Now he's also an idiot. But he is a victim as well because JJ, JJ's doing Phantom Menace, and Ryan Johnson's told go write number two or number Not eight. Phantom Menace. You mean uh, Force Awakens? Sorry, right. Force Awakens. It's it all mixes in for me. <laughs> uh, he's told to go write the next one. Well, JJ's still doing the first one, and the script's not even completed. He's still doing yeah. everything, and Ryan don't know what JJ's going to do. Ryan, go but write, go write the, the second movie. movie. Can I see the first? No. Of course not. No, there's no. Sorry. And can so I, you can got I see Kathleen. dailies? No. No. You got Kathleen and her Lucasfilm team <laughs> in the room with him saying, oh, yeah, this is good. Do this and get outside the box. And, oh, Ryan, yeah, you know what's good? You got to make this your own, which means – yeah, if you want to make Luke a bumbling freaking idiot who drinks blue milk or purple milk or whatever it is from an animal, whatever, do that and make him, you know, do all these things. Yeah, they encouraged him, man. By the they way, I went to the Galaxy's Edge or whatever at Disneyland. Oh, you saw it. I haven't yeah. seen it. And uh, there, on like every corner, there is like stands that sell blue milk. No, it's like on. a blue milk slushy or something. It's weird. <laughs> I had to, I had to try it. I had to try it, so I bought one. Was I it spent good? Like fourteen dollars, and I'm like, yeah, it sort of tastes like what I thought it would taste. Like. Did it really? <laughs> it just tastes like like frozen fruity milk. 
Okay. Like I, if you had fruity pebbles and then drank the milk? If you took like um um if you took milk and like some kind of blue candy. Okay. And you froze it. Mm. That's what it tastes like. All right. Like a blue Fair Jolly enough. Rancher with milk. All right. It's the worst. Yeah. Wait, what what about what about when he when do you think that he went to Kathleen Kennedy and said, "Okay, guys, I want to do like a World War II film, but set in the Star Wars universe." What do you think, Kathleen? You think she was like, yeah. "Do it, yeah. do yeah. it"? She said, "You need to you need to make this movie your own." She said it. She said a good director will make this movie your own. And let me tell you, you tell Ryan Johnson that the guy who literally does make every movie his own. And look, Knives Out's a great movie. Yeah, I think Knives Out Two is going to be great. It's good, uh, but you you don't let this guy do your middle movie. You know, I, we blame JJ for this too. JJ's fault. JJ shouldn't have let it go. JJ's fault. Kathy's fault. Ryan's fault. They're all at fault. Uh, the the Disney executives. Well, Disney fault. executives that that. I, I, don't, I You should have backed up whatever money you need to back up, or delay whatever you have to delay to whatever you had to have d- delayed, to make sure that JJ Abrams did the entire thing. Yeah, or if you were gonna, or or collaborate, that's what they didn't do. Is JJ and Ryan didn't collaborate on the films to have some sort of connection. You know, Ryan it was his own take on it. I, I don't know. I mean, look, George made sure four, five, and six were you know, four, five, and six. You know, <laughs> damn uh, hot topics. Yeah. There's gonna be more Star Wars movies. Yay. I mean, his yay is in caps. Are you being sarcastic there, Dan? Um, I don't know if he's being sarcastic, but I read it as... Listen, we don't yay. need another Star Wars trilogy movie series anytime soon. So it says it's still in development. I don't like this headline. And then it says the director still hopes to return to the ga- that galaxy far, far away. Um, it's it, Empire, he's talking to Empire and basically said he loved working on Star Wars... I don't know after the reaction he got how he can love working on it, but okay. And he yeah. wants to return. And his reaction was so visceral. Like he literally complained about like being attacked online for months. Yeah. Well, the the man who ruins Luke Skywalker should never make another Star Wars movie ever again. Yeah. He, whether it was his fault or Kathleen's fault Barnes. or JJ's fault, I don't care. I don't care. It was wh- his fault he ruined Luke. He ruined Luke because of himself. Right. Yes. He did that. Yeah. yeah. He ruined Luke. Forget it. His decisions ruined that movie. So, all to, yeah, you know, yes, Kathleen could have said, don't make it your own. And right. JJ could have said, hey, man, you got to follow this new script, whatever. Yeah, but right. ultimately, Ryan Johnson did say, you know what? I've, it's like, have you seen Star Wars? Like, let's say, let's say he didn't even know what was happening for Force Awakens. Did he watch the previous seven movies? That's a good question, right? <laughs> Has he seen it? Wait. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you do with his lightsaber. Dude, when he when he when he, when he threw that, like the entire I was in the theater. The entire theater was like, oh. Everything changed at that moment. Like yeah. everything changed. So You've been waiting. How long did we wait? We had waited for this moment. We knew that that Ray was going to meet him and he, yeah. he was going to get the lightsaber. It was like this moment. And it was like Ryan Johnson saying, oh, I'm going to F you everybody right now. And just F you, all you fans. Because he said in so many words, like, you're not here to satisfy. Kathleen told him, Kathleen, you're not here to satisfy the fans. You do your movie. Uh, <laughs> what is Why do you make a movie if not for the fans? Yeah, what's the point? What's yeah, the point I remember he, we wore that T-shirt that says, like, your Snoke theory is wrong. And I'm like, this guy is, he's, he's a dickhead. Like, yeah, like he's just like he likes it, yeah. If he was being if he was just being a mild troll, that's fine, but he, he clearly is a dickhead. So he's a victim who has his own problems. So, yes, regardless of whose ultimate fault it was. So ultimately, I would say Kathleen Kennedy was at fault. And JJ for leaving the franchise for some awful reason. The executives for not delaying it or, or making it happen so he was part of it. And no one checking their math and no one giving uh Ryan Johnson, all that information. Yes, ultimately. But the guy who made the movie his own, in his words and Kathleen's words, was still garbage. And if you if you make a Star Wars movie 
regardless, and you tank the franchise like he did with TLG, he should never, ever be allowed to be even even on set. Don't even allow Ryan Johnson on set because his cancerous bad ideas can infect the whole thing. That's if I was the executive, I'd be like, uh, you know, I'm sorry, Ryan Johnson wants to do what? Send send the assassins. Just I, I want him cleaned up right now. I don't want. No. Where's Boba Fett? Where where yeah. where's where's Boba? I we I know we cloned the real one, right? <laughs> with 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 Walt Disney's head, right? Yeah, send him. The official word is that Kennedy confirmed the trilogy's on hold, citing Johnson's knives out deal with Netflix. Although we all know Disney's terrified to make a new Star Wars movie right now, considering everything going on. <laughs> everything you mean all the bad ideas that they all the came bad up. stuff that's happening. They're like, uh, we shouldn't make any, and they did. They put it on hold for good reason. They need to wait. No more movies. They're they're coming out with as we'll talk about here shortly, I believe. Uh, they are making Star Wars Rogue One Part Two. What? <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a the movie that's coming out in 2023. Anyways, we'll talk about it. Rogue One Part Two? Are they insane? I think it's, hold on a second. It's, are they insane? Wait, wait, let me. Okay, let me look at it. We're going to tell you. Hold on. It's that might, uh, that might be the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It's. I can't believe I got rid of it here. Okay, hold on. It's. Uh, <laughs> I gotta find the link again. Hold on. I'll tell you right now. Talk about something else. Oh my god. Well, this is the Andor thing, which I know you're excited for. Yeah, so so here's Star Wars is doing uh yeah, Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Oh. so it's not it's not work too. Is 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 gonna be made. That's like the next movie they got coming out. I'm sorry, is Star Killer in Andor? What? Is that that's and- not him, right? No, it's not. For a minute there, I was like, I might get excited about this, but it's not the same guy. Yeah, um, yeah, Rogue One Part Two, but how? Sorry, Rogue Squadron. I'm like, I read that wrong. Rogue One Part Two. I'm like, yeah. oh. Part Two is Part Two is Star Wars Episode Four, so I'm not they, sure. About they all died. <laughs> that's how Roshi is like. That's like a Titanic Part Two. <laughs> right? Titanic Part Two. They made a Titanic Two, guys. They made one. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. They made a, a ship called Titanic 2. I think there's a movie, Titanic 2, that was like direct direct to video. It was probably one of those asylum movies. It wasn't real. It was like, I don't know. <laughs> My kids all wanted to watch it. I'm like, I'm not sure that's oh, right. Oh, God. All right, guys. Listen, uh, if you're not a subscriber, because 93% of you are not, please hit that subscribe button on the way to the comment section to admonish Shane for thinking that it was Rogue One Part 2. <laughs> Rogue One Part Two or Star Wars Episode Four slash Rogue Squadron. They should have called it Star Wars Rogue Two. (laughs) Because you loved Rogue One so much. We want you to love something that we do besides Mandalorian. You know there's dummies that would have thought they're like, oh, oh, it's a sequel to Rogue One. Rogue Two. Okay. (laughs) Rogue Two. Darth Vader kills everyone. Oh my god. I could see a whole movie of Darth Vader just killing people on that ship. That would be part two. That was one of the coolest. That was one of the coolest scenes for me. Yeah, totally. And the only good part of uh, Obi Wan, really, was when he was killing people. <laughs> I was like, please get He's dragging down. people through the streets. You're missing Obi Wan. You gotta find him. Go get kill Obi Wan. Why are you getting distracted, Darth Vader? Because <laughs> it's fun. End our suffering. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. It's pretty bad if you start rooting for, for Darth Vader to beat Obi-Wan at some at one point. Oh, Anthony Mark just said Titanic 2 aired on the Sci-Fi Channel in January 2020, 2011. It was an excuse to do nice. a climate change. <laughs> what? Hold up. Hold up. Yeah, no, it's real, man. It's real. Tell I me. thought I thought you were confusing like one of those asylum movies. You know you know that production company Asylum? Like, whenever there's a new Transformers movie, they're like, oh, there's a Transformers movie. Let's make Transmorphers. I don't know what's wrong with. Yeah, they're trying to make money off of it or something. Yeah, it's like uh, okay. I I think we've talked about it before, but this is so Rogue funny. One, you guys. Rogue One Part Two, Electric Boogaloo. I like that one, Jeremy. Look at look at these these. Uh, Asylum is a studio that basically just like makes like versions of popular movies. Here we oh. go. All right, here we real quick. Um, 
We have uh, King of the Ants, Scarecrow Slayer, <laughs> Vampires versus Zombies, Alien Abduction, and you know this is like coming out around an alien movie. They made H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds when the War of the Worlds movie came out with Tom Cruise. Wow. <laughs> Legion of the Dead when, when the Evil Dead movie came out. So I guess you're just hoping people will get confused when they click or something. See, I'm not joking. Here, Transmorphers. There it is. It's Transformers. Oh, Hitch the Hitchhiker. This is like right. horrible. Like, oh, listen, I like this one. Street Racer. When Fast and Furious <laughs> Four came out, they came out with Street Racer. <laughs> Boy, they should have come out with Fast and More Furious. How about this one? The Terminators. The Terminators. <laughs> <laughs> just like rip-offs. the Terminator, the Terminators. Oh uh, yeah, it's, yeah, just ripper rip offs. Fun movies though. If you know what you're watching, like you're watching garbage, so treat it like garbage. <sighs> um, no wait, no, I need to look up Titanic two real quick before we move on because I just I have to see what that's about. Oh my god, Titanic two electric boogaloo. <laughs> this can't be true. I don't see it anywhere, dude. You guys are you guys are pulling my chain, no. man. There is a Titanic too. No, I'm seeing like 2023 concept. Jack's back. <laughs> it's right here. IMDb 2010 Titanic two. What? Yeah. Just look up type. Right. Type oh in my God. It's an asylum movie. Is it really? Bro. I'm look at this. This the, look, right. I'm looking at it right now. Here. It oh, is. you're right. Here it is. The asylum look, presents Titanic, Titanic two action. Yes. It's it's literally a one out of ten stars. Yeah, it's on an, IMDb. It's I was see I wasn't wrong. It's literally a Titanic. It's an asylum movie. It's like the Titanic, but it takes place in modern time. <laughs> well, it's stupid. So <sighs> stupid. I told you it had to happen. I knew it. I knew it was an asylum movie because no one in their no studio in their right minds would make Titanic two except for Asylum because they're nuts. They did it. A, they did it on the hundredth anniversary of the original voyage. <laughs> Jack's back. <laughs> Jack's ghost takes over the ship. Um, all right. The second ship hits the iceberg and it broke off. Yes, there is an asylum. There's asylum Titanic too. See, I knew it. I wasn't dumb. That's great. That's so mm-hmm. good. I, I I'm so happy that we we looked at the asylum movies and then found out Titanic two was an asylum yes. movie. Yes, and they didn't call it like I don't know. They could have called it something else. Huge, 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 huge antic or something. Well, I mean, I mean, you can't. You're not, they didn't copyright Titanic, right? I mean, I guess not. Yeah, that's what that's what they do. Like they 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 do movies that have a or corresponding non trademark, like The Terminators. You know. Which I'm right, pretty, right. pretty sure that was like pushing it, okay? Yeah. Or, or H.G. Wells' The Time Machine when they came out with The Time Machine. Right. Mm-hmm. Or Titanic 2. What if Jack survived? <laughs> Jack's back. Jack's and he's back. pissed. <laughs> he's mad. He wanted room on that door. Rose, make room. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Speaking of uh, semi mediocre, we are talking about. Actually, let me let me set this up properly. Semi mediocre. We're talking about She Hulk. This is our little quickie review for the 15 minute episode of She Hulk, episode <laughs> three. <laughs> it's basically a 15 minute episode, right? Shay, I'm not crazy here. They're, they're longer, but it's it feels like it. They're like 22 minutes. Well, or something. So hold up. For the first like 10 minutes, though, she's basically setting up. What already happened in the first movie? Yeah, I I couldn't skip either for some reason. It was really stressing me out. Um. Okay. So it, it basically, after she sets it up again, like I'm the Hulk, I'm an attorney, now I'm I'm defending abomination, blah blah blah. It actually goes to uh, um. Let me get past the Marvels. That's not, another minute for the Marvels logo. Thank you. It goes to the prison scene where she's actually trying to get um, Abomination paroled. And this is the, actually the part that's good for me. Like, I like everything with Tim Roth. Yeah. He's great. Yeah, he's great. And Wong everything is great. With, yeah. yeah go ahead. <clears throat> Wong is I was going to say the same thing. Wong, everything with Wong is great. The, 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 uh, the Wong universe, what do they call it? The, 
somebody was calling it the Wong. It's not the cinematic universe. It's not like the MCU. It's the Wong CU. Because he's been in everything lately. Yeah. Yeah, he has been in everything. Um, so uh, this part, like, I'm, I sent him a third, a third, a thirst trap. It was a picture of me with a bunch of books. I don't know. That was a stupid joke, by the way. Just you know, a thirst trap is when you send someone like a picture of like you working out and showing some leg or whatever. You know. Oh, I see. I see. This breaking the wall was good though. Yes. I like this. I love how she she lets go of the wheel. You know, cars are still passing. You know, you know, it's all, the car's still moving, but she's not steering. It was a really good fourth wall break, and I thought it was actually pretty funny. Yeah, I agree. Um, I like how she addresses like, "Don't worry, Wong. Wong this is not the you know Wong's gonna not, not gonna be in being be in every episode." Then she goes, "Well, maybe every episode." And you're like, "Oh, okay. Well, well no uh, uh, cameos." Cameo. Is what she was talking. Right. The big thing with MCU right now is like there's everybody's doing a cameo in something, right? And right. so there's not. She said there's not gonna be any cameos. Well, except Wong, and except do this, and except the image. You know, oh, and and that's right, uh, uh, the Hulk. You know, so she started it, but I'm the main character of the show, and I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, what about what what about when they uh you know uh, uh dogged on all the YouTubers out there? I don't. You know, th this is the 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 part that you know. The one thing that we were worried about is that this was going to become like a male bashing kind of show. Um, and for the most part, they've got like one character, one guy who who's become like the chauvinistic piece of garbage dude. And I'm willing to say, yeah, you can have one of those guys because there are guys like that. But if you do a bunch of guys, that's not good. So yeah. one guy sure have it, but you also got a kind of a nice guy on there too. That's fine. Yeah, but this one, thing, one in every four guys can be a chauvinistic uh, d bag. I would say more than that, but okay, you know, one in eight, maybe one in ten, but whatever. So, but the point is, is that uh, then they do this whole thing where they start poking at people on online who say no more superhero females. Well, you know, why do you have to change, you know, get rid of and they basically attacked a corner of the Internet that's frustrated that the MCU has become what people are calling the MCU. And now they're focusing on all these female superheroes and it is happening that way. And there are people who are frustrated but let me ask you a question. Do you punch somebody in the face that you, I mean, why get people even more worked up about it? It just wasn't necessary. Well, like nobody's yeah. saying she Hulk is ooh bad in this whole show. You know, she's done nothing but pretty much good things. It's also you disingenuous know? though, too. It's like, we're going to immediately uh, silence our uh, uh, proper, criticisms by saying by assigning those criticisms to these people that you shouldn't listen to it's the same right. as yeah. when when one politician calls another politician racist with no actual bias and with no actual proof or anything because they're trying to get the word out there so that the normies that aren't totally paying attention can be like oh well then everything that person that politician says i need to complete disregard because they're insert adjective here yeah exactly what you said and i guess a shorter way to put it would be like they're trying to delegitimize anybody complaining that uh there's too many female superheroes happening right now it's just it's not that there's too many female superheroes it's just not happening in an organic way and it's being kind of forced uh to happen and you know, there's nothing wrong with She-Hulk happening. She-Hulk was a character a lot of people loved and wanted. Um, so that's not one of the ones we're talking about. So it's kind of weird just to... Yeah, it's why weird. Poke, why poke the bear? Why, it's almost like when they were writing it, they're like, oh, everyone's mad that they're replacing Iron Man with this random person. Or right. This. So we better get ahead of that and make sure that we answer those criticisms in our show. No one's complaining about, about She-Hulk. How about just make a good show and shut up? Yeah, just make a good How show. And make a good show, and then, you know, don't say nothing else. Don't be political. Just go make a good show, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I like that. Just shut up and make a good show. Stop, yeah. stop trying to answer criticism before they, they've even come up, dude. Jesus. Right. And I'm sorry. It is dumb to replace Iron Man with Ironheart. You're literally skipping over Don Cheadle's character. So how does no one not see that? Sorry. Side note. Jesus. Iron Man's a stupid character. Why are we already introducing 
her into the MCU. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Well, we're doing it because they want more female superheroes. Oh, it doesn't Which mean is why people are complaining. You're, the, so. you're, you're bypassing Don Cheeto's. War- okay, anyways, I'm not gonna talk, I'm not gonna talk about Iron Man. And there's just, some cool super. There are cool female superheroes. Yes. Okay. Plenty. Work on those. Yeah, there yeah. yeah. Work on the good ones that we already like. Okay, She Hulk. And by the way, She Hulk's one of them. And She Hulk's one. Yes. I like the Asgard fairy princess or whatever. <laughs> so great, so great. The one thing that this show's doing really good, Brian, is it's adding small little elements of the Marvel universe. And expanding on not necessarily very important things, small little things, and giving us little bits of more information and expanding the universe. And I like that about this show. I actually love this <clears throat> when uh, Asgardian fairy lady, whatever, turns into him, and and is like, <laughs> like is like the you know m- m- misogynistic a hole that everyone expects from the video. He's like, that's not me, guys. You know me. That's not me. <laughs> that's not me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's great. I love seeing uh Tim Roth's uh, harem of awaiting uh, <laughs> yeah, what is his 10 about? pals from, from, from jail. This is a thing, man. I don't know. There are a lot of uh people who like to marry or like to be with inmates, and I don't, I've I still don't get it. Somebody needs to explain it to me because, but there are people like that out there. All those poor bastards out there that are still trying to find like a girlfriend, and there's there's inmates. <laughs> With seven girlfriends. <laughs> he's got, I think he has eight of them, I think, total. Um, I thought this was hilarious, though. Like, Tim Roth is such a stud. He was able to, uh, you know, get eight undying soulmates from with nothing but a pen and a piece of paper. Right. I do love Tim Roth. And this show, I thought, for, I thought this was going to diminish my opinion of Tim Roth, but... I, He's just being Tim Roth, and he's great. He's a great Tim Roth is really good at being Tim Roth, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, there's a show called Lie to Me or Liar or something like that. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but you need to go check it out. It's it's led by Tim Roth. He's fantastic. Mm, I have not seen that. Great show. Um, yeah, this whole thing's fine. Uh, yeah, they, I like how they bring out all the. They bring the people who work at the jail to like, he's like change their lives or, right. you know, he's help like, them. No, you away. work on you, Gary. You work on you. Yeah. He, he's like yeah. this model yeah. person. Yeah. And he's like, we're done with Gary now. Like when he gets like over the top, right? <laughs> right. Cry. Yeah, like, we're, we're done with Gary. Yeah. So uh, uh, unless, unless I'm missing something, apparently Abomination is, he is, he has reformed. And I would argue, um, he wasn't really the bad guy in the first place. And <laughs> I like actually like how this show brings that up because I remember watching the Hulk movie and being like, huh, why did he just like go nuts all of a sudden? Like he was like, you know, he's a good soldier and it makes <clears throat> sense. Like this whole thing, it, 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 this movie is making a previous movie better. TV show. No, he played the abomination in the this movie. TV show. He, she was, you're talking about She-Hulk, right? I'm sorry. This TV show is making yeah. a previous movie that was subpar, Incredible Hulk, a better movie. To some degree, yeah. To, to a degree. It's making the villain better. Yeah. Which, I would argue, a big part of that problem with that movie was the villain. Didn't make any sense. Yeah. They, they got so hung up on being able to show the abomination, they didn't give him any real character. Um... All right. This so is the B story. Yeah, this is the B story with the Asgardian who. Uh, <laughs> this lady did a really good job. She did. She took Megan the Megan the Stallion or the Stallion. Uh, Megan the Stallion. Megan the Stallion's uh, form, and she tricked this uh, dummy into buying her a bunch of stuff because Megan the Stallion's like this hot rapper chick, you know, that twerks a lot, and um. Oh, it's Megan the Stallion. Is it Megan oh, okay. the Stallion? The Stallion. It's not the Stallion. Megan, Megan the Stallion. Megan the Stallion. Lie to me. Thank you, Marshall. It's called Lie to Me. Um, yeah. So I like that a lot, though, because like, it paints. It also paints that misogynistic dude as like what he is. He's an idiot. Mm. And there's idiots that exist. That's okay. <laughs> I would argue that Megan the, the Stallion is one of those idiots, but you know, it's not. Yeah, agreed. She's a female idiot. 
<laughs> she's a female idiot. Um, I don't know why they got all pissed off when he turned into the abomination. Like, aren't is, aren't they safe? I'll tell you what I think it is. I think as a lawyer, and uh-huh. I felt this, like she knew, like she does not, he, he doesn't want to pull out the creature because that's going to freak him out. And then maybe he won't get his, he won't get put out. That's not going to, it's going to remind him of the bad stuff. And so she thought him changing was a really bad idea. So I when see. he did it, she was trying to get him to change back. Anybody and else mad good. that his graphics look better than she Hulk's graphics? Uh, they didn't focus on him very long. I didn't, and I didn't think the graphics were that great. I mean, it. I'll just, I'll just show you. Ready? Like this texture. Oh man, I, I can only show so much without getting dinged. There's a zoom. There's a close up of his tech. It's, it's, it's much better graphics. I mean, he's got a lot of detail in his body, right? But there's no motion there. Like in her face, it's got to be. It's moving. Okay, that's fair. Maybe. Yeah. That would be my guess. Maybe that's maybe that's what the problem was. Maybe they wanted uh, the actress's actual like <clears throat> expressions yeah. expressions to come through, and that's how that's why they had to dumb the graphics down a little bit. Maybe I don't know. It looks weird. Like it's it, yeah. When she's trying to like this actress is a physical actress, so a lot of her facial expressions are part of her acting, and that's part of why She Hulk seems so weird is because that's not coming through anymore. Like it does on the other character, on the main character. Right. Yeah, that's a good, good, good point. Um, she actually testifies on uh, <clears throat> misogynistic guy's behalf and says, "Yeah, he's absolutely too dumb to have known." That's, that's funny. <laughs> it's a good way to win, but it did him no favors. Right. <clears throat> and yeah, he wins the case. Blah blah blah. Oh, when when the Asgardian fairy uh, acts like the judge, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, it was good. A lot of good little funny movies or yeah. moments here. What, is it not fairy? What is it like? Shapeshifter or something? I don't know. An elf, a light elf. Light elf. Thank you, Shane. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna fast forward. There's a moment. Let me get back real quick before we get to this final scene. There's a moment when they're like, uh, "Wong, so you admitted to." Uh, <laughs> oh, I love that part. Yeah. <laughs> to uh, breaking someone out of prison, you know that's illegal, right? He's like, "Oh, uh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he was out of there quick. <clears throat> All right, so this this final scene, she's like casually walking through the aisle, and you know, of course, she gets accosted by uh, Asgardian construction workers. <laughs> well, they robbed the. They're not actually Asgardians. Construction. They they robbed an Asgardian construction worker. That was funny when they were like, "What did you rob an Asgardian a construction worker?" He's like, "Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah." These guys are from the comics. They're usually giving Thor a hard time, um, but yeah. <laughs> They're trying to get her blood. Yeah, uh, that's that's. I'm sure that's a underlying story there. Someone's trying to get her blood so they can make more. Yeah, so they said they have a boss. Boss is going to be unhappy. We don't know who that boss is, but right. We'll have to see. Um, I want to I want to show this scene real quick. When she asks him if if you rub, they're they're all doing their moves. Showing up. Right. <laughs> okay, the guy with the helmet. Watch the guy with the helmet. Ready. <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he only has a helmet like they all have cool weapons so he's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's shaking his helmet. That, that's the one thing about this show like this show is it's not that this show's bad it's not a bad show and but what's good about it is that it's kind of funny like and we, you don't get a lot of funny marvel stuff so it's got a lot of kind of funny stuff going on and uh and the actress is good so it's not horrible. It's, it's not horrible. It's not good. It's not. It's not good or or bad. It's like somewhere in between. It like it has it has entertainment value, but I feel like it's on the precipice of either being good or being bad. Right, and I would argue that maybe even though we keep giving it a hard time saying it's only like twenty two minutes long, maybe we should just not complain and say. That's good because if it was 35 or 40 minutes long, maybe it wouldn't be good. You know what I mean? <laughs> maybe. Yeah. So he does say, uh, once you turn into She Hulk, I couldn't pierce that nasty green skin. Watch your mouth. Green skin's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So apparently she was trying to, they were trying to get blood from her. All mm-hmm. right. Now I'm going to fast forward to uh, the greatest part of this entire episode. It's when. Um, Oh, it's working. <laughs> and I put this comment up. Look at Megan's dying with her tongue out. God, I don't like this person so much. Like, 
Listen, at full disclosure, I thoroughly dislike Megan the Stallion. I think she's everything wrong with a lot of portions of the internet. And she's just so horrible. Um, Dr. Evil says, she a gross man. Please don't objectify me. Now watch me twerk. <laughs> well, th- that's a good point. Well, here's funny, guys. So nah, She's doing the thing with Yeah. Yeah. God, I hate her so much. I didn't know that this person was a real person. Okay. Well, until I talked to Brian, this is funny. I thought that this person was like a made up Marvel Universe famous person. Like like she was supposed to be like, a, like who's that girl? Car- uh, you Bef- thought uh, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. I'm like, oh, maybe this is like this world's Nicki Minaj. And then Brian's like, no, no, she's she's like a real person. Like I said, wait, there's a person named Megan the Stallion in like real life right yeah. now. And he's like, oh yeah. And then he explained that she does these crazy videos where she's basically naked. Yeah, she's pretty uh, much naked the entire time. We were talking and about then she, nah, did, nah. she does this thing. And then, nah. Oh god, she's horrible. And then she did like some dirty song that's really super dirty. It's right, so something. horrible that it couldn't even be yeah. censored. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, now I know I, I vaguely know who you're talking about. And, and shame on YouTube for not making that su- at least the vid- at least make the video age gated. We have videos that are limited advertisers because Shane said a naughty word and that and and she has songs that use nothing but naughty words and have pretty much nudity and they're not even limited ads. They're running full ads. There isn't even an age gate. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So now Disney is basically backing up Megan the Stallion. Now, this is the interesting thing about this. I kind of let my kids watch Disney Plus without worrying too much about what they're watching. But, you know, now that I know what this person's content is outside of it, I'm kind of, it's kind of like, whoa, I can't believe Disney's actually backing this person. They could have done use so many people. They did not need to use this person. You know what? They could have just changed her name. They right. Could have, they could have used the, the, the person and not, not promoted Megan the Stallion. Well, what I'm saying, well, and then use Megan the Stallion in the sh- in the role, it would have still been talked about. No, they shouldn't have had her on the show at all. Yeah, you know, if somebody's out there basically showing all their private parts on the, in, to the world, and then you put them on a kid, you know, on on a, I know it's not a kid show, but put them on Disney Plus. I mean, I just don't know what kind of message you're sending if you're not going to put other things out there. If you're going to take Slave Leia. Off of the internet. Oh, right. Right. If you're going to remove Reach. Slave Leia Reach. off the internet, how do you have Megan the Stallion? If you've seen her content, if you've seen her content, how, how is that okay, Disney? You're going to remove okay? Slave Leia? Yeah, you're going to remove Slave Leia. Yet Megan the Stallion is on your. Get... What? There Come you go. On. How dare you? The hypocrisy is appalling. <laughs> oh my god, that was a really good point, Shane. Because I'm still pissed. I'm still pissed that they, that they they got rid of Slave Leia. I'm just yeah. waiting for them to retroactively dress her or something in the in in the digital version, dude. <laughs> Would not put it past them. So, anyways, it just seems a little hypocritical. Overall, She Hulk episode three was probably the best episode. Episode three was probably probably the best, and it's going to be like this, I'm assuming, from here on out now that we've done all the initial stuff. Uh, there's not a ton of episodes. I think six episodes left. Um, so, yeah. The, this entire, the entire, if you took every scene with no, no credits, no setup, whatever, and just, like, made a movie out of She-Hulk, it might be the same size as Zack Snyder's Justice League. If you did like what? Just took every episode and took out the intro and the mm. and the credits and just had it run back to back. It legitimately might be around the same size as the Snyder cut. It's shorter actually. It's shorter, really? Yeah, it would be shorter. So like twenty two minutes, I think times nine would be two it would be like two hundred minutes, which is shorter than the Zack Snyder cut. Jesus. Yeah. All right. Uh, Archmage Frey says, Slave Leia may be, may be off the internet, but it's always in my heart. Yes, I'm with you, Archmage Frey. I actually have a lovely, uh, uh, what are those, those metal plates, the plate 
D plate, whatever. Oh, slave layer. That's great. I'm looking for a place to put it in my office. Okay, that's it. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the way to the comment section and let us know. Do you have any slave Leia art? Let us know. <laughs> that's a weird thing. To what, what? Really? I mean, I guess. I guess. I... <laughs> right? That's such a weird thing. I don't know why. Let's I said be careful that. what we put out there, okay? I don't know why I said that. Uh, can I can I edit that, please? Just take that on back. Take it away. If you got if you got slave Leia at home somehow, let us know. <laughs> You know, there's some rich guy that uses those like real had like a slave slave Leia Rio doll real doll made. You know. Oh, okay. One of those like, you know, you know what real doll is, right? Like a like a big doll or something like that. Oh God, oh, you're 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 so adorably uh, protected. You don't know who Megan the Stallion is. You don't know what a real doll is. <laughs> is that like a, like your is like a special doll? It's like a very advanced sex robot. Oh, okay. Well, explain this. They look like actual people. Oh, okay. So you, you're always oh, seeing you're saying so somebody might have a slave Leia actual person robot. That's what I'm saying like these things look like pretty much as close as you can get to like a what an actual person would look like. Lars and the real girl. I saw that. And they cost like ten thousand dollars. Uh, but the custom like the custom ones world? are like way more. I can I can just see some rich like some Dubai star Dubai prince who's also a Star Wars fan has some slave <laughs> Leia real doll. Is it, Archmage is saying it's Lars and the real girl? I remember that movie, and he had like a like a, was it like a blow up doll or something like that? There, it's like it's so beyond blow up doll at this point. It's basically a sex bot, dude. Got it. All it's, right, it's, it's super sci fi stuff. Super sci fi. <clears throat> Oh, we're heading to the member section, bro. Look at that. Oh, already? Dang. Yeah. Yeah, that, that time time flew. Okay, well, time flies when you're having fun, I guess. We are heading to the members section. If you are a member, please head on over there and join us for the final three topics. And we're going to do a little giveaway. So come on over. The water's warm because Shane, because Shane kept peeing in it. Okay. Um, that happened recently, actually, but it wasn't me. We like we we went to the local pool, and as we were leaving, some like five year old just like pulled his stuff down and like peed in the pool. And we're like, man, I'm so glad we're leaving. Right oh, now. I have a funny story about that. So go to popcast.co slash join, or and I will, I will put this in the actual. Art Mage says real dolls are always in the member section. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Bye, weird. Penny. Um. Links in the in the in the chat, and it's in the description, and it's on screen. You have every way of getting there. Also, when this ends, it's going to forward over there. I'm assuming if that works. Real quick, I'm gonna just tell my tell my quick uh, story about the about the public pool. <laughs> there was a I live near a a park. It's called Hart Park, and in when I was young, I'm not sure if they have it anymore. There is the only public pool that I'm aware of in my in my county, right? And for years, there was like, we would go there like once, you know, summer, maybe twice a summer and go in the public pool. And one, one day, I remember this, our dad uh, <laughs> and a bunch of like church people, we had gone to the public pool. And I remember walking in being super excited to be there. And then watching dad, literally he's walking he he glances at the pool and he makes a U-turn and starts ushering everyone out. <laughs> okay. No explanation. I literally look over my shoulder. Wait. There's like a line of diarrhea in the pool, dude. Oh no. It was like a, and at the time I didn't know what it was because I was young, but I just saw a line of like brown, you know? Oh, I'm yeah. Like, what's what's going on? And he goes, We're gonna we're gonna go to uh the embassy suites and go to that pool instead. <laughs> and we never went back to that pool ever again, bro. I can see why. Public yep. pools are scary. Bye, Marshall. Although I'm so poor, I've considered taking my own kids there. So, yeah. <laughs> what does that say? Just be like, be on the lookout for a brown streak. If you see any brown, get out. Yeah. Baby Ruth. Baby Ruth. All right. That's it, guys. Uh, come to the member section. You guys know where it's at. And uh, yeah, and that's it. Thank you so much for being here. If you're not coming over, that's cool. 
we will see you guys tomorrow. We're going to do more reviews coming up and more clips and all kinds of fun stuff. So, you know, hit that notification bell. Hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber and you're watching this after the fact. If not, if you're not coming to the member section, we love you so much, and we'll see you next time. See you guys next week.